Convo podcast contains language that some may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. Well, now we're done with that shit. Let's start the show. For the victory lap. Food and getting drunk. I'm confused. 
You got your priorities set. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, Drees, cranberry sauce, thumbs up or thumbs down? Well, it depends on the cranberry sauce. Now, cranberry sauce, usually how we eat cranberry sauce is it out the can. And you, you open the can, and it comes out in this big chunk that looks like the can. Right. And then you slice it up into circles. And then you, you put it on a platter. Yes. And that is canned cranberry sauce, how it's traditionally been done. Yes. Now, I, I know in my mind that's probably not the best way to enjoy cranberry sauce. Like, I don't know who makes cranberry sauce from scratch. And it's probably delicious, but that's the only way I know to enjoy cranberry sauce. And we do it because we've always done it that way. And it's not like I'm craving cranberry sauce at Thanksgiving, but we always do it like that. We cut it into circles, which makes absolutely no sense. But that's how we enjoy cranberry sauce. Gotcha. Gotcha. T. Patty, you a cranberry sauce person? I am. Because it's something about the cranberry sauce being mixed with the greens and the macaroni and cheese and the dressing. Like, you get all that on one fork. That's what's up. That's what's so, up. So, I make my cranberry sauce from scratch. Put a little what? Work. You, you make it. your cranberry sauce from scratch, see, Patty? I do. It's easy to make. However, Ooh, you, you about to snatch somebody's son. No, thank you. I've already had somebody's son. I'm good on that. I'll borrow somebody's son, though, for a while. But quit distracting me. We'll talk about that later. I don't have anything against the canned cranberry sauce because I will eat it either way because it's just good. I never eat it any other time of year but Thanksgiving and Christmas. One of those holidays, I will have some cranberry sauce, either fresh or out of the can. Either way, I want some. Gotcha. Now, T. Petty, you spot on with the cranberry sauce. Like, I like it when mine mixed with the Pillsbury Crescent dinner roll. You put a little bit of the cranberry sauce on the poppin' fresh dough. Damn. Poppin' fresh. <laughs> poppin' fresh of the crescent rolls. Then we get the ones we gotta break it on the side of the uh st- on the side of the sink and bust it open. And then you lay them out. You gotta come out light and fluffy, light and flaky. Light and flaky. Are y'all still talking about rolls? Yeah, I'm talking about something else. No, light and flaky, the crescent rolls. <laughs> You know, my mother-in-law made cranberry chutney, which still has some of the fruit. Like, this was like fresh cranberries and stuff, and she made that as well. And that was absolutely delicious. So, your boy, if somebody else is making the chutney or the cranberry sauce, I'll have it. But uh, I'm a traditional, um, you know, in-the-can uh, cranberry sauce guy. So, uh, we'll see uh, how this goes for Christmas and what's up with that. Um, speaking of Thanksgiving, Florida man story. This guy got on TV from Florida talking about he thaws his turkey in the pool. He said that he makes sure that the turkey is sealed and that none of the chlorine water gets in with the with the turkey, but he throws the frozen turkey in the pool and thaws it. T. Petty, the floor is yours. What kind of dumbass shit is that? That's just fucking ridiculous. You know what? It's Florida. I don't even have to ask the rest of the demographic question. That's disgusting. Moving on, next question. Drees, throwing the turkey in the pool. Why, why would you even do that? If, if you have a pool, you have a sink, you have a kitchen sink, just put it in the kitchen sink. Just let it defrost, dethaw. That it just makes no sense. in the refrigerator two, three days ahead of time like you're supposed to so you don't give your family homemade poisoning. How about that? This just makes no sense. How do you conceive something like that? We just gonna take a frozen turkey, throw it in the pool, and just let it thaw. Like you gotta, if you using your pool, if the temperature is warm enough, you gotta avoid the turkey while you're swimming in the pool. And the same way you conceive of the idea that you get clean in the shower on your legs by just letting the, run, the soap run down. <laughs> that I, all kind of nastiness, unbelievable. Um. And that, that chlorine getting in that turkey. Okay, how, how good you seal it? That and chlorine getting in that turkey. everything else floating around in that damn pool of water. Mm-hmm. Drees, the mayor from Austin, Texas, had a nice videotape message for the citizens of Austin. He said, stay home for Thanksgiving. Everybody's masked up. You know, you should have only your immediate family or two or three people maximum. He taped the message while he was on vacation with his family for Thanksgiving. In Mexico, 
So um, he went to a whole nother country to record this message, telling people to stay at home, and he didn't stay his ass at home. What do you think about that? All right, first of all, was he black? Uh, I'm not sure looking at him if I could tell his ethnicity. He, 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 he No, he, I, I think he was black. And the reason why I say that, because <laughs> black people is the king of, of do what I say, not what I do. And that, this was the case of it. Do what I say, not what I do. I know what's best for you. Don't worry about me. That's exactly what that was. T. Petty, happy Thanksgiving from Mexico by the Austin mayor. You know what? Leadership is a quality that is lacking in so many leaders. That's all I have to say about that dumb bullshit. How are you going to tell me to do something and you're not doing it? And you're in Texas. They already down there acting crazy. They don't even need an excuse. They I hate everything. Mm. Um, Black Friday during the Rona, I mean, apparently these people haven't figured out that there's a little thing called Amazon and that you can order shit off a computer <laughs> and they drop it off on your porch. So, T. Petty, what did you see Black Friday-wise in your neck of the woods or what did you see on TV? It's a lot of people out here. <sighs> so, first of all, that whole Black Friday bullshit, I didn't do that before the Rona because why? People. So I don't even believe in that. As far as buying stuff, that is all psychological. Because if you look, there are sites you can go to to track prices, like on Amazon or whatever, and the prices are no different. All they do is just put a little red line through it and make you feel like you're getting a deal. So what you should do is go get consumer reports like somebody with some sense, and it'll tell you the best time of year to buy your electronics, and it's not around Black Friday. No, huh. so I didn't buy anything. Well, not that much. <laughs> My goal was to keep my credit cards in my pocket. I think I was good for the most part. I don't think I spent any money. But, Drees, Black Friday during the Rona, what did you see, man? Uh, I'm going to tell y'all a Black Friday story I have. Because I don't usually do Black Friday, but I, I did it this one year. This is like, okay, we old enough to remember when, um, you know, flat screen TVs was, like, new. Yeah. When, they came, when they first came out, you know like flat, two flat screen TVs. And um, I think I went to um, a store that they had a special on like a flat screen TV. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get up. I got up, it was like six in the morning. I, I think I was in the, at, at the store before 6.30, you know, before they opened up. I kind of got in the line. And it wasn't a, a, a real long line, but it was like, you know, it was a lot of people. And I got in the store. I said, I'm going to get this flat screen TV because I had a really good special deal on it. And I went in there and I, I like, I raced in the store and I, and I found a flat screen TV. I was like, oh, I got one because that's the other thing with Black Friday is like they would like limit the amount of things that create a frenzy. And so I got the TV and the box and I, I went to the counter and I paid for it. And I got home. I tell you, within a month, that TV stopped working. <laughs> it was trash it was a trash tv and i say like, i done got up six o'clock in the morning to get this tv and it is like just garbage and ever since then i was like i would never do another black friday in my life so i, I haven't been back to black friday i've done black friday since then so it, they burnt me once i was like that's it you ain't get me no more now, they, they got you on a legitimate tip at whatever store this was, but these fools going out here meeting people in the Burger King parking lot for a PS5, you exchange the money for the PS5, and then you get home and it's a box of bricks. You damn fool. It's on you. <laughs> it deserves yeah, it, got. you got. If you ain't checking a box, that's on you, especially if you're doing a deal at a in a fast food um, parking lot. Unbelievable. Uh, T. Petty, they out here said it's a mistletoe shortage. They said, one, it's not growing like it did. Usually, two, with the COVID, people ain't going to be really using the mistletoe. So have you ever been kissed under the mistletoe? And what is mistletoe? Number one, hell no. Nah. Y'all know how I feel about strangers being close to me, let alone putting their lips on me. And if I know you and want you to kiss me, we don't need no mistletoe. And three, mistletoe 
it looks like it's poison ivy to me, so I don't fuck with it. You know how I feel about nature. <laughs> Drees, poison ivy gate 2020. They said that they ain't got none, and they said that people ain't going to be kissing. Well, shit, it ain't no holiday parties anyway, but people ain't going to be kissing under the mistletoe because they ain't got none, and they ain't supposed to be kissing during the Rona. What you think? You know, I, I never bought into the mistletoe thing. It just never made sense to me that you're going to hold up a, a piece of a plant and then somebody's supposed to kiss you. Uh, like, you know, it just it just never made sense to me. It's, it's, ne- it's something I never brought into. And I, I, I've never done it. I've never, like, kissed under the mistletoe. I, I don't know. I'm not going to say I might have kissed my wife under a mistletoe a time or two. But I, I can't ever remember using that outside of outside of that as a as a way to kiss somebody. And I, I, I don't think it makes any sense. Look, for all you people that's single or whatever, you're trying to get kissed during Christmas, let me give you a modification. You get you a hat and you get you a stick and you put you a nickel bag of weed or a dime bag of weed on wow. that stick on your hat and you'll get kissed. You might not be somebody you want to kiss you, but you'll get kissed. It's a plant. You can call it mistletoe. Are you saying all black people smoke weed? Well, hey, I'm just saying, you know, you got a weed on your hat and it's holiday time. And people want to get high. I'm just saying you'll be able to get you a kiss. You could just put mistletoe on your hat or label a little baggy mistletoe. I bet you they will be able to get kissed. That's, not, I'm just, that's just practical advice from me, Nookie Bishop Jr. here on the Digital Gumbo Podcast. Okay, T. Petty, these corny-ass holiday commercials, the ones for the jewelry, the one for the cars, is a car a bullshit holiday gift? It's like, Merry Christmas, here's 59 payments for you. Exactly. So unless you are bringing me a car that is fully paid for, how are you giving me a gift that's going to cost me money? Absolutely not. You need to pay for the car in full and the insurance, and you need to cover the maintenance, because otherwise you just give me another bill. Get the fuck out of here. Hmm. Drees, you get a car... In the driveway with the big bow on it for Christmas, you telling that person that you telling uh, Mrs. Elbow to take it back. Look, if if somebody give me a car for Christmas with the bow on it, whether they got a bill or not, I ain't paying it. <laughs> I ain't paying nothing. So I'm I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna have that present so they come and get it. But I I, I for damn sure ain't paying no bill on it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna enjoy it while I got it. I was like, all right, I'm gonna drive this thing until somebody come and get it. Cause obviously I wasn't there when when you signed any paperwork. I ain't signed no paperwork, so that it ain't on me. It's another thing too. If you're single, especially if you're a woman, and a dude gives you something like that, he's more than likely just trying to control you. I can buy my own car if that's what I want, sir. Give me the cash if you care about me. I never thought about Actually, that. That's a good point. The cash is better, too. Yeah, give me money. I know. You might have put a buy. GPS on that car or something to go right to their phone and tracking your movements. Mm-hmm. Track these nuts. I'll go buy my own car. Give me some money. <laughs> Are you saying uh, track these chestnuts? <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all. Okay, uh, the debate rages on vers- real trees versus fake trees. So they're saying... Um, the fake trees is plentiful this year because not a lot of people be coming out. But a lot of people is just ordering the fake trees. Contactless, for the most part, shows up on your porch and you get it. So, Drees, are you fake tree, real tree, or no tree? Man, we went real tree this year. Usually we're fake tree because, like, we travel and we go elsewhere. But we did a real tree. We actually went out to um, a tree farm as a family. You know, it's, it's outdoor. Um, and, you know, you do everything outdoors. You pick your tree. And you bring it back. And it was like a really fun time. Like we, we went out there, you know, found our tree. Um, they had this little place you can go in to get ornaments. You know, it was kind of open, kind of air, but still kind of closed in. So we got to have an outdoor experience as a family. So that was really good to do that. So we got we got a live tree, but they are a lot of work. You gotta you gotta water the tree. You got to, like, you know, unplug it at, at night, you know, to make sure, like, ain't nothing crazy happening going on there. So it's just, a, it's, it's a lot more maintenance than, uh, I think, a, a fake tree. Yeah, yeah. T. Petty, real tree, fake tree, or no tree? Real tree only. If you got to get a fake tree, don't have a tree. 
I've never had a fake tree in my life. I didn't grow up with fake trees. The whole going out to the tree farm, you get the little donut holes and some hot apple cider. It's all tradition, the smell of a fresh Christmas tree. So fresh trees only. And they're not that much work. You just water them, you know, every couple of days. That's all. The, the smell is great. I will say yeah. that too, Betty. Just the fresh tree smell is, is wonderful. It's amazing. Now, your boy is all three teams, right? Now, for the majority of my life, we had the fake tree, right? Uh, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm team all three. So, for the majority of my years, we had the fake tree. Two years, two only two Christmases, we had a real tree, right? But I've been also team no tree. Now, this was back in the 90s, right? I just was like uh, at work, and I was just telling people, I ain't having no tree. This lady said, everybody has to have a tree. She brought me the cutest tree from the dollar store right you know it lay flat and then you spin it out and it's got those little <laughs> silver clips on it and it, 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 it only have five it's only got five little branches it, it, have no branch. it was just like yeah, this, charlie brown christmas tree no it was like it's like uh you know like uh things they like they fold out and they like get round so it folds flat and then you you unleash the clips and it folds out to like make a tree and then it had a little star on it and she was like everybody should have a christmas tree Here's your Christmas tree. I was like, thank you very much. So that year I had a paper tree. So I've had all three. Wait, trees. it was a paper tree? Paper. It was a paper tree, yeah. It was, you don't have to water it. If, wow. Exactly. I knew going to catch fire that, somebody that, said that, that seems sadder than no tree. I agree. I mean, if you if you can't get a tree for whatever reason, then get you a wreath, get you some poinsettias. You know, throw a little some ornaments and like some glass jars and something and play um I'm, play I'm some get, traditional Christmas music. I'm gonna go on the um Big Forest uh video store and just put up the uh the fire or like the lights and that's good. I'll go on Urcam and see what other people are doing with their lights and trees. That's gonna be about it for twenty twenty on brand. Oh, All right, y'all. So holiday traditions, right? So one of the things we did do when I was growing up, I'm not really a Christmas person, but that's neither here nor there. But one of the greatest Christmas songs ever is This Christmas by Donny Hathaway. In yes. that song, he, uh, yes. Do you guys agree? Yes. That's one of my, I, like, it don't feel like Christmas till I, I hear that song. It's that one and a couple of other ones, but like that's one of the songs is like, it's Christmas time. I wish you'd have to start playing on Thanksgiving when you cook it. But go on though. Yep. Exactly. So in that song, Donny Hathaway says, Jig a hand, jig a hand. What does jig a hand mean? What the hell are you I, wait, about? I thought it was always, I thought it was lend a hand. I thought, it, I don't know, I was like, lend a hand, lend a hand, and you know, for somebody else. Like, what do you say? Jig a hand. What? Jig a hand, jig a hand. I, I thought it was jig a hand. <laughs> In my mind, it was like lend a hand, lend a hand, like you were supposed to be helping out for the holiday season. But now that you don't question it, I gotta go back and listen to it now. <laughs> See, Betty, what do you think they, they think he was saying? I think he said lend a hand, not jig a hand. What I swear I heard him say jig a hand, jig a hand. Sir. <laughs> He's saying. <laughs> Well, this is why I asked the question because no. I don't know. I've been saying jig a hand for all these years. No. Okay, okay. The official lyrics say shake a hand. Shake oh, a shake hand. a hand. Oh, see, you said lend a hand. I thought it was lend a hand. It sounded lend a hand to me, but it never sounded like no jig a hand. Shake a hand. <laughs> jig a hand, jig a hand. Shake a hand, shake a hand now. Yeah, that makes sense. Debunking lyrics mess here. Well, on the wait, wait. I'm going to stop you right there, T-Petty. It is, it is COVID. It is COVID Christmas, so no shaking hands. Oh. Shake your hands, shake your hands, shake your hands. I mean, you can shake hands with the people that are in your bubble or your corn base. Yeah, I guess that's true. That's about it. That's why, first of all, you know how I feel about shaking hands, too. Maybe I'm not really cut out for this Christmas stuff. It's too much. Yeah, I think we need to go back to jig a hand just for jig a hand. Go back to shaking hands after the vaccine comes out in 2021. So we'll see what's going on with that. Um, Dries, you know about this wassail and wassail mix. So, um, me and uh, Dries had some socially distanced drinks, yeah. and um, I found I out. I wasn't invited. Uh, this was uh, boys. Uh, all right, we'll talk about that off here. Cool. Cool. 
It was a sausage party. There, there you go. All right, y'all, ash gas sausage party. All right. So um, how I became familiar with wassailing and wassail mix is um, I had a real nice boss, uh, you know, many, many years ago. Gave us the whole setup uh, in um, a box for Thanksgiving. I mean, like a turkey, um, you know, dressing mix, everything, eggs, uh, everything, dessert, the whole nine yards. And in it was an envelope that said wassail mix. I'm like, what the hell is wassail mix? So I looked at it. It said, you take it, you warm up your red wine, and then you put the wassail mix in there, you whisk it in, and then you take the juice of about um, four halves of oranges, squeeze that in there, and you drink it. So wassail mix is like back in the day before they would go Christmas caroling, back in the day they would drink wassail mix to warm up their pipes. And this is when it was socially acceptable to go door to door seeing Christmas carols at people's houses. So, uh, T. Petty, have you ever gone wassailing, Christmas caroling, singing door to door? And have you ever had wassail? So, of course, no Christmas caroling. Y'all have heard me sing. I can't sing. A, B, visiting strangers is no. Also no. But wassail, I have had it because you know where they sell, where, where they sell like the, the pre-made mix at yeah. Trader Joe's. My favorite store. Okay. You can go and get you a whole big-ass bottle. Shit, there's going to be some wassail mix going on in people's uh, stockings this year, so that's what's up. Drees, have you ever had wassail and or have you ever been wassailing or Christmas care? I just want to say, wassail! I knew it. I knew it. So, Drees, have you ever had wassail and or have you ever been wassailing or Christmas care? Like when you when you like go around and you sing at people's house with like other people, I don't think I've ever done that. Like, why do people do that again? Uh, it's it's like you can get shot going around to people's houses unexpected. Yeah, I don't know if they do it now. I mean, you really got to be in with the homeowners association or some shit like that to be going around doing it now. But it's traditional, and um, you know the wassail comes from the tradition of people back in olden times. They would uh, drink the wassail. Uh, to go ahead. It's a, it's a wine, too, that you can buy um, by itself uh, as well, Wassel, and uh, people go ahead and drink that before they went uh, before they went Christmas carolers. So, um, you know, I don't know if you're going to see any Christmas carolers around your way. I'll tell you a funny-ass story. So I got really sick, like I was like maybe 10 or 11 years old, um, one Christmas, and this was on Christmas Eve. So I had really bad stomach cramps, like it was like a very, very bad virus. But, you know, Black Mamas is like, you taking your ass to church on Christmas Eve, I don't give a damn. So what they did was they gave me lean. They didn't call it lean at the time. What? They didn't call it they gave me lean? They gave you no damn lean. They gave me lean. Is it Listen, it was, right. pure, it was paragoric, and it was like a brown like liquid, like plaster, but you would swallow it. It had codeine in it. Okay, so, Paragoric so, might be on some. They did give you lean. They did yeah. give me lean, right? So the deal was is that um, before I went to church, the service started at about 7.30, the Christmas Eve service. My mother was like, take you some of the uh, Paragoric so that you don't have cramps during the service. No problem. So your boy was supposed to take one teaspoon, and I think I took two tablespoons. So I went to church on Christmas Eve high as hell. <laughs> so when the choir got ready to sing, you know, do you hear what I hear? I looked up in the ceiling of the church and angels was flying the words that they were singing. I seen the words with my own eyes. That's how high I was. So I haven't had wassail, but I have had lean. They call it paragoric. Back in the day for stomach cramps on Christmas Eve, your boy was high as hell. So, um, yeah, I don't even think that they prescribe or give that to people anymore. Like, the game has totally changed. They, but they did prescribe lean for my virus and stomach cramps many, many years ago. That's a funny That explains story. a lot, actually. Huh? That it explains does. a lot. <laughs> yes, yes. So, please, if they uh, give you that on Christmas Eve, just, uh, just don't do that. Okay, y'all. Um... Let's do uh, some flashbacks to 2020. So, uh, team back to 2020, 2020 in one word. Sum it up. What's the word that personifies and exemplifies 2020? Bullshit. <laughs> Next. Plain and simple. <laughs> Dries, what's your uh, word that sums up 2020 the best? I, I would go with virtual. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's very sophisticated of you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, just just for me, weird, like out of the ordinary. You know, I guess out of the ordinary is forwards, but uh, just um, abnormal. How about that? Just uh, masks and, you know, January, February, all good. March, we didn't think it was anything, and then all hell broke loose. So 2020 for me was uh, abnormal. Uh, Dries, 2020, who's your person of the year? 2020, person of the year? It's, it's got to be Anthony Fauci. I, I'm like, you know, it's got to be the person of the year. Like, he was, he's the one that's been the steady rock that's been, like, people been, you know, turning to, trusting out of all the mixed messages and things that's been happening. It's like, it's some, you know, folks want to listen to him. He's comforting. You, you feel like he's going to tell you the truth, but, like, there's a light at the end of the t- tunnel. So, um, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Gotcha. Uh, T. Penny, who's your 2020 person of the year? Besides me for making it through this bullshit. Yeah, round of applause. <laughs> Shit. You know what? This is a good question. Um, I could go with Fauci. I could also go with Kamala Harris because, I mean, historic first all the way around. Even though I don't agree with her on uh, some things, it's still pretty historic. Okay. That's, that's what you're on like that. That's a good one. That's a good one. My person of the year is called you, Y-O-U, you, T. Petty, you, Dries Elbow, you, Producer E, you. When you look in the mirror today, tomorrow, next year, the person of the year is you. You made it through this shit. You didn't think that this shit was coming in 2020, but you got up and you rolled out of bed at 7.58 for that 8 o'clock meeting and clicked in. You (laughs) did that. You survived. You put your mask on. You helped other people. You survived. You, 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 you are the person of 2020. Um, T. Petty, what's the word of the year for 2020? The phrase or word of the year for 2020? Oh, man. Word of the year or phrase of the year. Um, Okay, I have a couple. One, can everybody hear me? Two, can you see my screen? Three, I was trying to get off mute. God damn. If I hear any of that shit anymore, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. <laughs> These people that can't work the mics on the Zoom calls. It's uh, been a the- year. It's been Nine a months. year. <sighs> Dries, I would go with uh, socially distant uh, mask. And I would also go with contactless. That's 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 the that's one of the the three top phrases or words for me for 2020. What's yours, bro? Mine, it, and this is like hands down, no comparison. Ricky Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, what are you trying to tell us? No, no, that's my that's my favorite phrase because you can use it in so many areas. Like, Ugh, you did that for Ricky Dick. <laughs> Do better, ladies. You guys will have to listen to past episodes of the Digital Gumbo Podcast to figure out what that means. This is our 2020 year and wrap up episode of the Digital Gumbo Podcast. Drees, who is your shout out to? Who are you giving a shout out to in 2020 besides uh, Dr. Fauci? Uh, definitely my wife and, and uh, mm-hmm. my family for just like putting up with me and my mood swings and just. All the other craziness that just happened as a family, kind of dealing with um with with COVID. So I'm I'm gonna give a shout out to my wife for being so supportive and loving, and for my kids. Um, well, I, I guess just for um for loving me too. So gotcha. Mine will go to my wife as well, but it also goes to the files man that came in and got in right under the deadline for <laughs> the pandemic and installed my uh, files, the gigabit, right before it. Uh, they went to like 12 weeks out scheduling stuff because your boy wouldn't have had no internet if it wasn't for the files man that came and hooked that up. So shout out to you, files man. You the real MVP. T. Petty, who's your person of the year for 2020? Um, so definitely healthcare workers yep. and teachers Yes. Okay. and parents who are trying to homeschool these kids in the middle of the Rona. Yes, teachers and parents. Yep. I mean, those 
those got to be like equal. Exactly. And these grandparents that's done raising kids and now they on school, virtual school duty. God bless them. Ooh. Shout out to my uh, Uncle Don and my Aunt Veronica that's uh, holding the Lighted Schoolhouse program in their house now, many, many years post retirement. So you're right, T. Petty. Shout out to the parents and grandparents. Um, T. Petty, give me one prediction for 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of the prediction business because who the fuck knows what's going to happen. Um, but I will say cautiously optimistic better than 2020. Gotcha. Gotcha. I say uh, the economy is going to turn around. Um, I don't think that there's going to be the recession problems like we had this year. And I think the real estate market will stabilize. Um, also, I think that movie theaters will go out of business and you will see Jeff Bezos and others buy up these movie chains, convert the buildings to something else, or make them socially distant movie theaters going in to 2021. Dries, what's your prediction or a couple of quick predictions for 2021? I, I think I said this before. Uh, Kamala Harrison is going uh, Harris to be president. I think Joe... He's going to be out walking the dog and, and something just going to, I don't know what's going to happen. But I think she's going to be. Uh, trying to kill be that no, I didn't say he's going to be killed. He just might be. Yeah. You, know how he spr- you know how he sprang his ankle out he there running with the dog? I was like, he need, to, he need to sit down somewhere. He's going to mess around. And oh, so, so, so that's, that's one prediction. And, um, I, I, you know, I, I do think like, uh, we're going to have, um, this vaccine where um, a lot of folks are going to get vaccinated. Um, but I, I, I do feel like it, it, I don't know if it's going to be as effective as we want it to be because you got to get both the shots. You got to get a, a shot now and then one 21 days later. I'm just not sure if the logistics of all of that is going to work out like we think it's going to work out. Yeah, yeah, that's something to think about, man. Two shots and you know, different companies with different uh, vaccines. So it's going to be interesting. Hey, just the logistics of getting it out to people, seeing how it goes and, and who gets it first in the whole nine yards. So that's uh, that's definitely something. Okay, we talked about song lyrics, right? This Christmas earlier. Idris, what does Auld Lang Syne mean? We sing it at uh, when the ball drops right after at 12 midnight every year. People don't know the words to this. What does that mean? I, what I think it means is like um, let the let the past go and what's happened have you know be just go into the ether like all Lang Syne. I'm not sure what what language that comes from, but that's what I always take it as is like all Lang Syne is like hey, like just let it all go and it's all gonna be good. Okay, T Petty, hit me to the game. What does all Lang Syne mean? I think it's something like <laughs> excuse me. Days gone by, or days long ago, or something like that. It's like it's Scottish. Okay, That's where it comes from. All right. But I've never seen the song. I think that song is sad as hell at the end of the year. It's all draggy and slow. I want to hear something upbeat. So I never listen to it. We we gonna have to do a remix, a digital gumbo remix of all Lang Syne, but like put like some real English words in there and uh, <laughs> see how it comes out. We have to we have to do that before we get out of here. I got a surprise for y'all, but we got to thank the man with the master plan, Producer E. This is our 26th podcast this year. If you would have told me that we was going to launch a podcast in a pandemic and not even be in the same studio for the majority of those podcasts and that people in Africa, Asia, uh, Spain, uh, all continents, Australia and Antarctica would be listening to the Digital Gumbo podcast, I would have told y'all y'all was crazy, so... Shout out to producer E. Your thoughts, uh, uh, Dries, about us going worldwide, I guess, pretty much with the Digital Gumbo podcast. I, I think it's been an amazing, like, you know, 2020 has been jacked up in so many ways, but it's been amazing for the Digital Gumbo to get to uh, connect with um, you, Nook, and you, T-Petty, and then to connect with the listeners out there. So that's been been something special it's been something i look forward to all year long and i think it's given me a peace of mind and a release um just to have digital gumbo and be part of the digital gumbo family 
Exactly, exactly. T. Petty, we couldn't have a show without producer E, so uh, I'll step aside and let you uh, give a uh, thumbs up and thanks to the man that uh, puts it all together. Well, of course, y'all know how I feel about producer E. Uh, none of this would be possible without him. So hats off to him for wrangling all of us because y'all are a lot. So <laughs> y'all can get Thanks, producer E. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> he should have been the person of the year. There it is. Oh, yes. Person of the year. I like that. I like that. I, I want to change my answer. Yes. So this year, though, uh, yeah, I, at the beginning of the year, there's no way you would have been able to tell me that we would have been doing this and been consistent about it through a pandemic of all things. Absolutely. We're all busy and booked and got shit to do, but we make time to, to get together and do this. So I'm appreciative. Absolutely, absolutely. Now look, y'all. You gotta be. You gotta bear with me for a second. Now the deal is, is that they dropped the ball. You know that crystal ball at uh, Times Square New Year's Eve, and other cities have other things like they have a guitar in Nashville. Well, we can't afford no crystal ball, but your boy got. I got a gumbo pot right here. This is the Digital Gumbo Podcast. So, uh, on the count of three, we're gonna count it down from um, ten. And we're going to bring in uh, the new year. We're kicking 2020 to the curb. And we're going to bring in 2020 the right way. Okay, y'all ready? All right, coming down in three, two, one, ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, seven six, six, five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Yeah.